Chapter 53 Shakika The remaining companions made their way along a path, past the farm to the stone-paved main road. Quinn guided them to the left, then on, until they came to a crossroads. A tall post marked the crossroads. At the top of the post was a metal cage, large enough for a man. Quinn told them of the Shakikan tradition of leaving the bodies of convicted criminals in such cages for the crows to feed on. It served as a warning to anyone else considering a life of crime. It was unoccupied, but Quinn pointed out the pit full of the bones of previous cage residents. I was thinking of bringing Mum and Dad here on holiday, said Freddy in an undertone to Lydia. I'm not so sure now. You think ice cream making this crime here? Buddy joked. Might be, Freddy said. Who knows? Turns out if you come to a different country in a different dimension, people are like different. Imagine that, Christy remarked. Turning right at the crossroads brought them on the road heading to the city. They could see now that the city rose in three levels up the hill. On the topmost level was the citadel itself. Formidable stone walls separated the tiers. Scattered across the city were towers with conical roofs, not unlike those at Hogwarts. The walk to the city took a few hours. They stopped to have some food and to use the facilities. Quinn pointed out to the long, low latrine buildings. The Shikikans had learned that basic cleanliness was key to staving off illness, and had constructed blocks like this, not only in the city, but in the surrounding villages. These latrines were basic, but afforded a level of privacy which was better than nothing. The group reached the river which swept around the base of the hill on which the city stood. A wide stone bridge carried the road over the water to the gates in the outer wall of Shikika. From the bridge they could see the wharves and waterfront. Barges were loading and unloading on the quayside. Market stalls were crammed in wherever there were spaces between the warehouses. Crowds thronged and bustled along the waterfront as horse-drawn carts picked their way between the people. Guards armed with spears stood on either side of the city gates, watching for unfamiliar faces. Do your friends, Wanderer? one asked Quinn. Merchants? Merchants would bring some kind of merchandise, would they not? Quinn chuckled. These young people are fellow travellers I met on the road, many leagues hence. They've heard tales of the beauty and majesty of Shakika. I promised them I would guide them around the sights of the city, in reciprocation of their generosity and friendship. And your city looks fabulous, Freddy chirped. Wait till you get to the citadel, the other guard said. I hear there's a splendid library, Oddy said. The guards changed their demeanour. The library is not for outlanders, young man, the first guard warned. Could we just see the outside of it? Christy asked. Of course you can, the first guard laughed. You're looking at it. The entire city is the outside of the library. Only the scholars and elders may enter the library from inside the citadel. And you won't be getting in there, the second guard taunted. They all moved aside as the guards waved through two men pushing a laden handcart. Maybe visit the rest of the city, Lydia asked. We've come a long way to see it. The guards looked them over. Yes, you seem harmless enough. Pass, friends. Lydia and her party entered the city through the arch of the double gateway. There were a variety of buildings lining the streets. Between the multitude of shacks, lean-tos and hovels were taller stone-built buildings. They were solid and utilitarian, unadorned and uncompromising. As they passed along the streets at Quinn's urging, they discovered these buildings to be barracks for guards, offices for businesses, and houses for lowly merchants. The huts were the dwellings and workshops of the city's labourers. From time to time they saw carts pushed by street vendors. Some sold dubious snacks, others hawked trinkets designed for unwary sightseers. We need to ascend to the second level, Quinn told them. A friend of mine runs a hostelry there. Hopefully she will allow us to stay for the night. The streets meandered between the shacks and buildings. They saw several city guards patrolling the streets in pairs. Lydia was grateful for their presence. 
There were some sketchy characters loitering here and there. She didn't feel they were in any real danger. They could look after themselves should the need arise, but she didn't want them to have to use magic to do so. They came to another guarded gate, leading through the second city wall to the next level. The guards here wore clean, colourful uniforms, and carried ornate pikes. A pleasant afternoon to you, Ankamish, my dear friend, Quinn addressed the guard on the left. Wanderer, the guard acknowledged. What brings you here? The same things that always bring me here. The road and my feet, Quinn said. Moreover, I am drawn here by the wine and your dreadful card-playing. The other guard laughed. The first guard smiled and raised his eyebrows to the rim of his burnished helmet. Do you challenge me, Quinn, after the last time? I do, he confirmed, and you shall find me at Astamalos's hostelry this evening after your watch, should you wish to accept. The guard smiled, then gestured towards the others. And who are these ragtag vagabonds who follow in your less than fragrant wake? Not vagabonds at all, Quinn protested. Intrepid travellers, who have journeyed from afar to wonder at the glory of Shakika. Hmm, the guard mused. Are there any card players among their number? Are oh, they are but young in Kamish, Quinn said. And wealthy too, if they can wander the lands with no care for trade or work, in Kamish judged. I'll be glad to learn your card games, Dean said, if you're willing to teach me. I'm sure I could give you a lesson or two, Inkmish grinned. I hope you have gold. A little, Dean said. Of course I'll have more once I learn your game. Both guards laughed. We shall see, young master, Inkmish chuckled. We shall see. The guards waved them through into the second ring of the city. Quinn led the group around the second level. The buildings here were more ornate and had upper floors. Few of them were wooden, and none of them were the temporary-seeming shacks of the first level. The people they saw here dressed in colourful robes and looked respectable. There were still the city guards in evidence, but they showed less suspicion towards the visitors. Quinn hailed a few of them as friends. They took a tour of most of the second level. It rose some way from its outer wall to the wall of the third level. The buildings climbed in terraces, with streets going around the hill, and sloping alleys or stairs rising radially up towards the third level. There were shops lining the avenues here, clothes shops, wine merchants, jewellery shops, and shops selling items for the homes of the well-off. There was a market. The first level had no market. Quinn had told them that dwellers of that level would buy their goods from the waterfront outside the walls, along with the people from the outlying areas. Quinn led them around the hill until they were within sight of the gates where they had entered. And here is the hostelry of my friend Ostamalos, Quinn announced, holding out a hand to present the door to them. It was a stone building on two floors. Its only decoration was a large cup standing on a bracket above the entrance. They went inside. Abstract patterns in pastel shades covered the walls. Wooden tables and benches stood in rows across the floor. Shuttered windows let in sunlight, but the slats prevented those outside from seeing in. There was no bar, but the few customers seated there had earthenware pitchers and cups. They were drinking. Quinn the Wanderer, came a woman's voice. There was a serving hatch at the far end of the room. An athletic woman in her thirties was smiling at them. She made an odd sign with her hands. Quinn returned the gesture. My friends here are seeking rooms for the night, Quinn called, walking towards her. And are these the sort of friends who have gold to pay for the rooms? she asked. We are, said Lydia. Well, if you're comrades of Quinn, you will understand why I ask, the woman smiled. I think we can guess, Dean laughed. Welcome, friends of the Wanderer. The woman greeted them. I am Ostamalos, owner of this hostelry. Please you, come through the door here. I will show you the bedrooms. Up the narrow stone stairway, they found rooms which each held four wooden beds. I count nine of you, Ostamalos said. So you will need three rooms. And I, please you, will see the colour of your gold. 
"'Blessed girl,' said Quinn to Ostanlos, "'if you were to count me, we are one more than ten. "'If it please you, I would introduce you to the eleventh of our number.' Quinn took Lydia's rucksack, lay it down on the nearest bed, and opened it. Zander walked out, waving his tail majestically. "'A mow!' the woman said, wide-eyed. "'And the most beautiful I ever saw!' "'Thank you,' Zander said. "'It's nice to be appreciated once in a while.' Ostamo sank to her knees. "'He speaks! He is! He must be! A god! Bless me, Lord Mao!' "'You are blessed amongst women,' Zander said in an imperious tone. "'You have welcomed me and these my people into your hostelry.' "'May I introduce you to the Lord Zander?' said Quinn. "'Lord Zander,' she said reverently, "'you shall have my room if you wish it.' "'I am grateful for your offer, my child,' Zander replied, lapping up the adoration. "'But I will stay here with my high priestess and my handmaidens.' Christie made a choking noise. "'There is some gold for the rooms,' said Lydia, handing over a galleon. "'Will that be enough?' Ostamos gawped at the heavy coin. "'This is too much,' she said. "'Please you, I need nothing more than the presence of your lord.' "'Take it, my child,' Zander insisted, "'and bask in the eternal gratitude of Lord Zander.' "'Thank you, thank you, thank you,' the woman said, bowing as she backed out of the door. "'I may up much, Zander,' Jimmy remarked after she had gone. "'Bloody handmaidens!' Christie protested. You cheeky get. Ooh, handmaidens, said Dean. I like the sound of that, please you. What's all this please you stuff? Freddy asked. Short for if it pleases you, said Dev. It is where we get please from. I guess they haven't got rid of as many of the words as we have. It is the local custom, Quinn confirmed. So you, Sandy, a little scamp, Freddy said. How do you get to be a god? Astamilus is one of the Maun, Quinn explained. They are a cult, I suppose, who consider cats as divine. Mao is their word for cat, much like meow, as you might say. They regard ordinary cats who hunt for vermin with respect. Most cats here are scruffy wild cats. Finer, prettier breeds they treat as royalty. Xander is the finest and most handsome and can speak. Why would they think of him as anything other than a god? So how many of this Maun are there? Oddie asked. It is quite popular around here, mostly with women and gay men, Quinn admitted. That's why I thought it best for Zander to stay out of sight for a while. So would I be allowed in the bar? Zander asked. Absolutely, Quinn assured him. You would be accepted and respected. I would advise against your speaking, however, and I would strongly advise against you cheating at cards, just in case that thought was crossing anyone's mind. <laughs> Dean won't need to cheat at cards, Jimmy said. He's brilliant at probabilities and card counting. I would counsel against winning too much from Encamish the guard, Quinn warned. Keeping on the good side of the guards is greatly to be preferred. I suggest you sort your rooms out, Lydia said. Maybe we can all meet up back here for dinner before you go down to play games. Are we allowed to drink wine here? Dean asked Quinn. Oh, of course, the wanderer confirmed. You are fifteen, you said. You've been a man for three years by the reckoning of Shakika. Do not be hungover in the morning, Lydia decreed. We have a library and a token to find. And don't be coming back upstairs looking for handmaidens, Christie warned as the boys left their room 